As we know in the media, they report GDP as the most common and the most exposed form of economic activity. And that is the an estimate of the total level of market production in an economy. So it is the GDP is an estimate of the total level of market production in an economy. So why do we have this in these indicators of economic activity such as the GDP? It's because economists want to know how and where the the material and the non-material living standards are improving in certain parts of the economy. So this allows the government to target certain economy or certain sectors of the economy to improve the material living standards or the general overall living standards of the economy. So it is important to compare or to figure out what GDP is of the economy and so that could provide a an estimate or a relatively reliable measure of what the material living standards of the economy actually is. And we'll talk about how they calculate GDP in a further lecture. But now we're going to focus on other indicators of economic activity other than, than the GDP, which is the most reported example of economic activity. So we're three different types of economic activity that can be reported. So firstly, we have what is called lagging indicators and what this means is that it is reported after the activity has occurred so GDP for an exa for example is a lagging indicator because you can't measure GDP prior to to the production of or the market production of goods and services in an economy but you have to measure it after the period has occurred and so GDP is a lagging indicator so these statistics do not tell us what it, what is what the economy is doing right now but it talks about or it gives us an indication of what happened in the economy of what happened. And this is important to know because economists can then use previous or historical information to develop new policies that could help eliminate any bad choices they've made previously. So we have lagging indicators which include GDP, so e.g. GDP, inflation rate. We also have, say, the unemployment rate. Another such example. So these are just processed and released after the occurrence of this activity. And this is usually released by the ABS or the Australian Bureau of Statistics three months after it has happened. So leading, lagging indicators typically don't help us that much in improving economic activity or improving material living standards, but it does help us understand or analyze what has happened previously so that we can make better choices in the future. Secondly, we have what is called coincident indicators. And most of these indicators aren't a very holistic view of the economy, but it does provide what is happening at the moment. So co coincident indicators move very closely with, with actual changes of the economy. So it moves closely with the actual changes in an economy. And so while they are published um, over relatively short intervals, uh, they tell us what is happening right now. So these include so monthly, so e.g. monthly retail figures, sales figures, and anything that is released typically now rather than 
um, in the future. So coincident indicators tells us what is actually happening in the economy at the moment. And this can be useful to economists because they provide this information of current market activity in the economy. So let's write about GDP. And let's talk about the final type of indicator in an economy. And this is what is called leading indicators. So they help us predict what is going to happen in the economy. So helps economists predict what is going to to happen. So although it does not predict for certain what's going to happen in the economy, and because the government and the RBA are both forward-looking, so they, they don't react to economic activity as they don't usually look at GDP or inflation rates, the previous month's inflation rate or the unemployment rate by, to determine their policies. They're usually forward-looking, so they look at the leading indicators to determine their economic policies. So these indicators include, say, consumer confidence, money supply, building permits, etc. So what these what these um, indicators do is that if for example if consumer confidence is high then that would indicate to economists that in the future there will be greater consumption by consumers because they feel more, more less concerned about their job and m more confident about their financial future so they're going to spend more and therefore that's going to increase GDP and economic growth in the future. And similarly if building permits um, increase, therefore that ought to suggest that more people or more more builders are going to start constructing houses, apartments, um, high high rise towers, and all that, and that would increase um, the employment rate, or therefore create more jobs, and therefore decrease the unemployment rate, and therefore also increase the overall level of incomes in the economy. And so the government can use budgetary policy to help counteract or to counter-cyclically act against these leading indicators which suggest may either increase or decrease economic activity in the future. However, these indicators are not completely re reliable. So take for example how they discover or how they deduce consumer confidence. They take a survey or say they take a real this is a relatively small sample of the economy so they take a sample of um, a proportion of people in the economy and because they don't have the money or the time to survey everybody in the economy about how they're they're planning to spend in the future this may not be a representative sample of the economy so it therefore may be un unrepresentative. So to break this down it means that if I'm willing to spend say $100 in the next month there may be another 10 people who aren't willing to spend $100 in the, in, the, in the next month and that means the 10 people's consumer confidence are actually very low. So assuming that there are 11 people in the economy if only I'm surveyed and I'm very confident about my future then therefore the consumer confidence which is reported in this survey would therefore increase. But in actual reality, the underlying economic reality is that consumer confidence is very low because the, the vast majority of the population has have do not have high um, consumer confidence. And so the most of these leading indicators only take a small proportion of sample of the population and therefore do not represent the entire population as a whole. Although it might come very close to, it cannot be for certain to take these um, figures as gospel. So what this means is that economic activity can be measured in three 
different indicators. So we have lagging indicators, which are reported after the activity has occurred, so e.g. GDP or the inflation rate. We have coincident indicators, so which are mostly um, relating to the actual changes of the economy at the moment right now, so monthly retail sales figures. And so therefore the government can use these figures to determine um, how to change their interest rates to sort of counter cyclically act against movements that would maybe compromise the achievement of low inflation. And lastly, we have leading indicators, which help economists predict what is going to happen in the next period. And these examples include consumer confidence, the money supply in the economy, and also building permits. And there are many more which you can go on maybe say the ABS website and check them out. But for now, we're just going to have used these examples as leading, um, coincident and lagging indicators of economic activity.